in the first um, few slides, I'd like to um, go back one step to what the state of place with um, exclusive enteral nutrition first, as this was indeed the basis of doing a, a um, head to head trial, as you've just heard with the biologics. This was a head to head trial of two um, dietary therapies comparing the um, standard of care of exclusive enteral nutrition with the new diet uh, that uh, excludes common uh, dietary antigens in the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. So I'll first give a short overview of uh, dietary therapy, putting it in the context of what we're seeing across Canada of um, increasing rates of inflammatory bowel disease and uh, particularly where, where I'm uh, now in the East, we're faced with the highest rates of incidence of inflammatory bowel disease in the world meaning that this is really an environmental condition that may have some genetic uh, predisposition and um, some uh, uh, immune mediated triggers of the inflammation that uh, weren't their own investigations, but it's really these environmental triggers that uh, we're going after with these dietary intervention and much of the environmental triggers start to impact on the gut microbiome to some degree. So the bacteria if you've been hearing about in the previous com uh, presentations and the um, position of exclusive enteral nutrition so the exclusion of all diet and living off a liquid formula for 8 to 12 weeks is um, it's really very accepted in Europe as the mainstay of treatment of all uh, but the most severe forms of um, pediatric Crohn's disease uh, with the exception of very severe colonic disease and perianal disease and the reasons for that is really that as pediatricians, we're faced with decades of treatment ahead, which we're going after the same goals as our adult colleagues uh, to get early mucosal healing, to get the best possible outcomes. Uh, but in pediatrics, unlike what you've heard before of the adult presentations being more limited to the um, uh, end of the small bowel and the beginning of the large bowel in pediatrics, often dealing with a lot of the colon, the large bowel also being involved. And we have to pick therapies that do not compromise growth and development as they've already been compromised in the months uh, leading up to the diagnosis of Crohn's disease often. And um, as a common side effect of steroids, uh, we have to um, try to avoid these steroids to avoid the effects of steroids on bone mass uh, buildup during uh, puberty into young adulthood, uh, put together with uh, the long-term safety concerns of immune suppression for, uh, for many years. So um, the Cochrane um, reviews have uh, uh, summarized the ev evidence of dietary interventions to date and really the, uh, the studies up until now have been very far from conclusive when looking at specific dietary components, either fat or, sh or sugars, or protein and uh, they're uh, really not helping us a lot forward and the only dietary therapy uh, found effective to date is this enteral nutrition therapy and a Cochrane review from now a few years ago looked at the adult studies uh, in particular and compared them with steroids and in these uh, types of diagrams the studies are listed here and the um, line of no difference is this one uh, in the center of the slide here and if a, a study was showing a favor of steroids it was uh, pulling the uh, uh, the diamond shapes to the left if a study favored enteral nutrition it uh, would have pulled it to the right and what you see here is in these adult studies there was a, a signal that it was favoring steroids really across the studies and that was due mainly due to poor compliance and as soon as um, adults in these studies in the late 80s and uh, early 90s particularly were starting to feel better dietary compliance went down and the effect of steroids was just better because it was easier to keep uh, taking steroid tablets. Whereas when we look at pediatric studies, there was really no difference between steroids and enteral nutrition in terms of getting people in remission in these early studies. And when we then looked at more recent reviews of uh, data sets that um, were not in control studies, but often in studies where uh, people were um, observed and then outcomes compared. Most of the outcomes put remission rates around uh, 75 to 80% with no clear favor of enteral nutrition over steroids in the older data sets, but a definite benefit of enteral nutrition 
when it comes to healing the lining of the gut and mucosal healing. And so when we in uh, Halifax looked at this over the last uh, few years, doing just that, comparing nutrition with uh, steroids, we actually found that our cohort with nutrition did better than uh, steroids and were more likely to enter remission by the end of the first 12 weeks. And um, when we then looked at how that played out over the first few years of puberty, remembering that most of our kids are diagnosed around the age of uh, 11, 12, just as they're starting their puberty, it meant that about half of children could avoid steroids for the first few years and even 40% all the way through their puberty for four years um, without needing um, uh, more surgery or more anti-TNF as compared with steroids. In these graphs, the line of steroids and nutrition of time two needing a biologic is really no different for um, the group that was first treated with steroids or with anti-nutrition. But what anti-nutrition did do was to recover the problems children had with their growth and turned their short stature around into an, a normal height for age as uh, they progress through puberty. So uh, what can be expected with anti-nutrition and um, in comparison with the growth disease exclusion data, as I'll come to talk about in a few slides, is that within a few days to a few weeks, you should get a good response and remission is normally achieved by uh, three to four weeks. And uh, this all works best if you have a team around the, um, the person going through entry nutrition to help with the practicalities and the, uh, the struggles as they often uh, occur. Because as uh, one of our patients is showing, at the top of the slide, in many centers across Canada, this has meant up until today a nasogastric tube, so a tube into the stomach uh, being passed to achieve an intake of about two liters, two and a half liters of this formula per day to get these clinical results. So it's, it's um, an intense therapy for the young person to go through and for the family to support the young person through. And um, that's for... Um, achieving remission but in terms of maintaining remission this is clearly not a strategy of keeping this uh, nasogastric tube in and living off this exclusive uh, enteral nutrition just of the formula for a long time so some centers have tried this there's really not a lot of good evidence that this works um, uh, in the long run and it's a, a good idea in the in the in the medium to long term so uh, clearly by not eating and by living off one type of formula, we're affecting the microbiome. And the paradox has been that the very changes that are associated with Crohn's disease, such as less diverse bugs in the gut, are made worse by the central nutrition. So uh, some of the uh, findings of previous studies of not having enough fiber and therefore not having some of the uh, short chain fatty acids like butyrate that come from fiber and restore the lining and the immune responses there, those uh, fibers are absent from normal enteral nutrition. So again, there it's a paradox that this should even work. And um, I'll come back to that at the end when it comes to the Crohn's disease exclusion diet, uh, where enteral nutrition is finding some repositioning in the adult world is uh, as a way of stabilizing someone leading up to surgery or when disease is really out of control to get uh, some gut rest, uh, so to speak, in the, in the weeks leading up to surgery. And this group from the UK has actually shown that by giving enteral nutrition before surgery, the rates of complication here are much reduced as compared with a group of uh, patients who did not have any enteral nutrition. And there's a more than threefold reduction in the complications such as abscesses or wound problems in patients who were able to take a course of enteral nutrition leading up to their surgery. And before this randomized controlled trial, the group in Israel and Ari Veen, the professor uh, who is the senior author of this uh, case series, had already described the success of this in a case series of children and also in a smaller case series of adults and children who had been failing biologic uh, drugs and then were able to recapture uh, control of the, the, the disease due to these dietary changes. And so in this uh, randomized control trial, what we're trying to do is 
control the portion of the diet that people are allowed to eat because in previous studies where people were given the uh, advice to take a certain amount of calories from formula and then eat as they pleased alongside so-called partial enteral nutrition when that was unrestricted partial enteral nutrition the remission rates dropped importantly to only uh, about 50 percent as compared with uh, the uh, uh, 76 percent in exclusive enteral nutrition that we're commonly uh, seeing so not restricting the oral diet was always leading to that drop and what professor levine then did was to go through a series of animal studies where each of those components of the modern diet had been tested in isolation and then putting together a diet that addressed some of the microbiome changes some of the changes in how the gut lining deals with the, the uh, presence of so many bugs very close to it by restoring it, the barrier function and then controlling the immune responses to the, those organisms there and the study was structured uh, as a randomized controlled trial where um, at week zero families were approached to explain uh, the two groups were in group one the Crohn's disease exclusion diet was uh, given with 50 percent of the calories from modulin which is one of the formulas uh, commonly used to treat uh, Crohn's disease by means of exclusive and nutrition and here we limited the calories to 50 percent of the daily calories in the other group they did receive standard of care with 100 percent modulin but were um, uh, asked to just drink this so there was no uh, nasogastric tubes so no tubes down the nose into the stomach being used for this study and the primary outcomes were really to see how well tolerated this um, intervention was either eating alongside or just drinking enteral nutrition and indeed the needing a nasogastric tube was then considered a failure of uh, tolerance and that was our primary endpoint at uh, week six and the more traditional outcomes such as uh, actually this evening remission or responding well were taken as secondary outcomes um, because we were dealing with two effective uh, therapies really in this trial and then in the second phase of the trial both uh, groups uh, continued with 25% of calories per day from modulin but the group who had started the exclusion diet continued but now with a less restrictive uh, diet and more food products were allowed whereas the other group the group that had been on exclusive enteral nutrition was told to just go back to the diet as they had it uh, before and what the results uh, showed here first uh, some examples of diets that uh, were prepared by colleagues of ours at uh, Mount St. Vincent really helping um, participants in this study get an idea of how it was possible to cook and live of um, these these uh, these food items in the Crohn's disease exclusion diet so a wide variety of recipes was provided and uh, what the results uh, showed was that in blue the Crohn's disease exclusion diet was much better tolerated than exclusive enteral nutrition by week six that once you were in either arm and you were uh, okay to continue with it that both groups had good compliance with it and then uh, both groups also responded well so 85 percent responded well uh, to the therapy and 80 percent achieved uh, clinical remission as compared with 73 percent in the group uh, drinking the formula and uh, when we used this the strictest definition of remission using this Crohn's disease activity index uh, adapted for, for children 75 percent of uh, children achieved remission with the Crohn's disease exclusion diet and when we looked at this uh, disease activity index there were significant drops from uh, very uh, from mo moderately active to no, uh, remission for the uh, group going to the Crohn's disease exclusion diet as well as for the children doing enteral nutrition and that was also seen for like inflammatory markers like CRP when we then went uh, to the second time point at 12 weeks what we uh, noticed was that the uh, remission signal started to differ and indeed the group who had started to eat again the enteral nutrition exclusive group had been allowed to eat again after six weeks and there was an emission uh, percentage drop to about 45 percent very similar to what we had seen in the studies before where the diet was unrestricted 
but the group who stuck with the Crohn's disease exclusion diet maintained high rates of remission. Um, that was also the case when we looked at the group who maintained the normal CRP right the way through. And when we looked at the group who had already been in remission by week six, we saw that 87% of those children made it all the way through to week 12 in, com in complete clinical remission, as compared with a drop in the rate of uh, remission. So the kids who had been in exclusive anti-nutrition remission, who had been drinking the formula and achieved remission, lost their disease control and started to flare by week 12 because they started to eat again in an unrestricted diet. And we saw this also when we looked at calprotectin as a marker of uh, inflammation in the stool. So this is a stool inflammation marker where there was a consistent and sustained drop from the start to week 12 in the group taking Crohn's disease exclusion diet, but in the group who was doing the six weeks of modulin and then started to eat again, there was an upswing in calprotectin results. And these are uh, some of the um, microbiome data. And what these results show is um, the several hundreds of uh, organisms are around the outer rims of uh, these circles. And the changes in red show a difference between week six and week zero. And for the different groups um, that I've uh, summarized uh, for the uh, growth disease exclusion diet here, particularly this group of bacteria called proteobacteria, which is um, containing a group of organisms like E. coli, Klebsiella, um, that are uh, often associated with more aggressive uh, disease. And uh, from week zero to week six, we saw a decrease in those um, organisms, which was continuing into week 12, where we saw those uh, bacteria that are aggressive and, and can be associated with nasty ulcers. They were decreasing consistently. And the uh, big uh, green segment here is the group of bacteria that um, deal with fibers and are thought to be beneficial to gut health, and those were consistently increasing. And the main difference with entry nutrition is we see similar changes early on, but by the uh, second time point, the group uh, that was starting to eat again was looking a lot more like they were looking at baseline. So they kind of rebounded back to their microbiome that they had at the very start of uh, this dietary treatment. And what um, has happened since we've had the results of these, uh, this trial come available and presented at uh, the meeting in Copenhagen is that Nestle has uh, partnered with uh, the developers of the diet and has uh, put together support packages so that uh, anyone can uh, can get the details of this diet. It's all on, on mymodulife.com and um, the, uh, the, the website is partnered with a Modulife expert uh, training package where um, healthcare professionals can train to get uh, uh, all the information about the details behind the diet so that they uh, can give advice uh, to patients interested in taking this on. The um, website is structured so that the um, information does get provided always uh, in, in tandem with a healthcare provider so that if things uh, are not going well, that there's always a healthcare provider a healthcare provider involved in uh, in the care to uh, to help uh, adjust therapy if needed, so that there's uh, what we're not trying to do is uh, is make anyone think that medical therapy, if it's necessary, is uh, discontinued and just this diet is started. This is really um, a, a set of websites that are targeted to help uh, the healthcare provider and the patient uh, do this uh, together. So with that, I'll. Uh, Thank you for your attention.